Then several large trees in the bush behind the house come into flower. This is Rewa Rewa, or New Zealand honeysuckle, and it brings in the tui. The flowers remain attractive for about six weeks. We must plant other sources of nectar to extend the feeding. When the flowers disappear, so do the birds. On the pasture, there's no shortage of outsiders. Masked plover arrived from Australia during the 1930s as the habitat swung in their favour. The Australian magpie has been introduced on several occasions. Established in numbers, they are a nuisance and powerful enough to bully other birds. A bit of pasture has been converted to lawn for ball games. This is posh pasture that never sees chemicals. The surface is mown and the cuttings are left and soon busy with worms and other invertebrates, much to the delight of dozens of blackbirds and thrushes. Everything living here thrives in this agricultural environment and many, like the hedgehog, have a long association with what man has produced. My planting has been plagued by rabbits and I can't help but feel that the Australasian Harrier is at least on my side. Even the weeds are foreigners, but at least the flowers carry nectar. The common blue butterfly belongs here, but the eastern rosella is from Australia. Most of these weeds have a long association with grazing and they thrive. Many farmers resort to poison to control them. And on a blustery day, it isn't great news for native plants, susceptible in bush downwind. We collect our drinking water from off of the roof and I begin to wonder if that's such a good idea. My neighbour is troubled by aerial poison spraying to control gorse on an adjoining property. Soon after we arrived, the suburbs of Auckland were sprayed with poison to control an apple moth pest. Difficult to justify in a country that so resolutely claims to be clean and green. Because of the weed problem, allowing grass to go to seed, as I do, is largely frowned upon. And our neighbour brings over a few beef cattle to keep our minimal pasture in order. Presently they are enjoying fallers under an old pear tree. And so are the silver eyes, delightful birds common to the southwest Pacific. They may have arrived here during the 1800s, driven eastwards from Australia during a storm. At this time of year, silver eye flock, and it hasn't taken them long to find this fallen fruit. Nuisance European wasps have started the hollowing of many pears and the silver eye are a lot better at working around these stingers than the cattle. For whom getting stung in the mouth appears to be all part of the deal. The old cattle trail down to the stream is beginning to grow over, but still a great place for the Easter egg hunt. Here, older trees provide a more open canopy than on the steeper slopes of our gully. And with no grazing for a couple of years, the generation has been rapid. There are still some weeds growing, but many native plants are returning. Fantails follow us to pick off insects, much as robins will do in Britain. And it's not so fanciful to believe that they once followed giant mower on this land long before we were here. This egg has been hidden up one of many small rimu trees that are doing well. Rimu are easily identified by their cascading foliage and this is one of the first trees I could recognise. Well, their older predecessors will have been felled in the recent past for their beautiful red wood. There was once a timber mill close by. <laughs> 